Welcome to DuckCast Season 3 Finale, Episode 60, and hopefully the end of the Dark Saga. We had no saga this season at all. What? Nothing. What? It's all good. I'm happy to be here. <clears throat> the dark. I called the Dark Saga because it was dark for me. Racism. I was unhappy a significant amount of the season. Anyway, Marcus, welcome. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? It's been a long time. It really has. Uh, yeah, Marcus. Jeez. Marcus was someone who was part, like, one of the original members of this channel. He actually did upload videos too. Uh, and like, we had the Duck Brigade falling out. Everyone hated each other's guts. We all went our own ways. One by one, we got the band back together, and now Marcus is probably the last person we'll be getting back because I like have zero communication. Many people mentioned that before, but uh, Marcus, welcome to Dotcast. How you doing, man? I've been doing good. What have you been up to for the last couple of years? Because I I like occasionally see you post something on Facebook, but that that and Messenger has been my 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 only contact with you for the last few years. You killed yeah. the guy yet? You've been there yet? You've nope. been through some stuff? Traumatic stuff? PTSD <laughs> stuff? Anything? Juicy? Uh, I mean, no honestly, this, <laughs> this has been, I mean, honestly, quite a bit. At least within, at least this, within this last year, I've mostly been working. I graduated last year, class of 17. Yeah. And then, yeah, I've been... Working actually at a movie theater this last oh, cool. almost a year now. Five more days, it'll be a year. Cool, that's awesome, man. It is. It's been. It's though. It's kind of hard to believe though. It's that much time has already passed since I've been working at that movie theater. Movie theater just sounds like it'd be like a out of like any job where you're like just doing like a service like that. For it, it, um, I mean, it's a. Uh, it's like it'd be a most... dining movie theater. What? It's a dining movie theater. Oh, got it. Well, what I was going to say is, like, out of any place where it's, like, a service where, like, you're selling something or serving other people, just if movie theater seems like it'd be one of the most enjoyable places out of all of those to work at. I hear movie theaters are, like, one of the worst places, like, next to retail. I hear that. My a Teddy used to work I at don't. a regal movie theater. I honestly don't hear that. I've heard people who just, like, say they really enjoy it, actually. Mm, I enjoy it. I mean... I think it depends too, like on the management, because the management there is like is fun, is honestly really fun. They'll like to have fun with you. They'll talk. Yeah. They'll crack jokes with you. Yeah, that's good to have. <laughs> Pretty lucky. Absolutely. Um. Yeah. No. Like there was someone who I went to college with, um, like two years ago, and he like we we all had like it was kind of like an introduce yourself thing, and he uh mentioned going to movie theater and just said he loved it and said he was i mean i don't think all movie theaters do this but i think some of them do i do believe he was able to get into movies for free because of his job there hmm. yeah um, same um at my are... job i get free mo free movies popcorn drinks and ices that's awesome yeah then yeah, every that's... once in a while it, they'll do a screening of certain movies for employees oh that's really cool actually yeah. Um, I just went and saw a movie last night called Upgrade. Have either of you seen or heard of it? Never heard of it. I have. I'm so disappointed because not, the, right now there's, I think it's five locations now. There's one, the one I work at, McKinney. There's Keller, Flower Mountain, and then there's two in Austin. One of them just opened up. And we didn't, none of the three up, none of the th Movie theaters, the movie house and eatery theaters near me got it. Only Austin location got got upgraded, and I'm so disappointed because I really wanted to see it. I guess it's not like I mean I shouldn't. I guess it's not really a mainstream thing because me and Gage went, and we were the only ones in the movie theater, um, and it just got released too. And I don't know why. At, Regal sometimes just lets their theaters play empty because I mean it had like ten showings yesterday. And no one was at one of the um, showings we went to. And it was one of the later showings, too. I understand a lot of people aren't going to the movies in the morning. But this was, like, I think we went to, like, a – yeah, we went, like, around 5. And normally 
I mean, it looked like a fucking ghost town in there last night. Like, no one was at the movies last night. There was, like, maybe five cars parked in this huge parking lot. I mean, do they have any, like, trailers or anything out for it? Like, I haven't seen anything regarding I, I didn't watch a trailer. I didn't see yeah. anything. A YouTuber in Krill, I follow him on Twitter, and he said it was really good. And I was like, I wanted to see a movie, but I really don't want to fucking see Solo because I have zero interest in Solo. I so I want really to find bad. something to watch. <laughs> so I want to find Solo something was like... Solo was actually we, yeah, we did a we did a screening of that. I uh, enjoyed it. I hear some. I hear it's very fifty fifty, but it's like you know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't People, know. There's there's certain fans I can't enjoy. Some fans just really can't. I my my friend Max, who's a huge huge Star Wars nerd, and hates like all the Disney Star Wars movies, said Han Solo was the first good good one. Um, so it is a mixed bag because like, he hated The Force Awakens, he hated The Last Jedi, you, he hated Rogue One. Did you hear about um, the woman who now, or yeah, I guess right now for the time being, like owns Star Wars, like bought out uh, Star Wars from George Lucas? She's she's uh, going to be packing her boxes in September and leaving. She's gonna she's getting fired. Really? I, I'm pretty sure. I'm like 99 percent sure that's true. What the hell did she do? Well, a lot of bad movies as of recently from Force Awakens up to now for oh. really bad movies and, you know. Star Wars, Solo. She hasn't been, she's, I don't know she, if that's fair. What no, she did, she said she, she said she was, her, her words exactly like, you know, that a lot of fans like emphasizes like, you know, she's, uh, she's gonna, she's gonna do all this for the fans, you know, staying loyal to the, to the source material and everything and she didn't and uh, promised to George Lucas and everything and, you know, it's, I'm I'm sure firing her is gonna fix all of the problems of the Star Wars movies. You know what the problem was? I don't I think, think that's the problem. I think it's to go forward with the movies. I think that makes no uh, sense. But like well, you know, going forward with the movies, getting someone else to do them better, obviously. He, I liked The Force Awakens. I liked Rogue mm -hmm. One. I liked um, The Last Jedi. I didn't care extreme like a lot about any of them, but I don't really care about the original movies either. I just think they're all kind of fun, and that's it. Um, Solo, the only thing that makes me want to see a Solo is Donald Glover's in it, and mm -hmm. I like Donald Glover a lot. But, uh, yeah, like, I mean, I, I'll probably eventually end up seeing it, but I don't think I'm going to see it in theaters. However, uh, what I will say about Disney, with their with all of this fucking shit they're buying, is <laughs> for reals, I really, really enjoy... Um, I really think with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they planned everything out. And they like did a great job. Like they know what they're gonna do for the next ten movies. You know, they're they're really thinking far ahead for it and have a good plan. Um, and then, uh, but with Star Wars, I think they are just winging it. Like I don't think they had any idea what they were going to do with it. I it's, think they are constantly. Yeah. Star Wars is like is like across the fourth wall. That's what we'll compare it to. It's definitely like you know they they put the certain person in charge and she was very very SJW strong and a lot of stuff and like. It, it just yeah yeah it rubbed people the wrong the wrong way clearly and you know it it's she had her own goals and it wasn't really the goals for everyone it it wasn't exactly Disney it was what Disney hired they thought was the best choice and uh, it's just a mistake it happens but it's a shame that a trilogy that you know should have happened like I don't know the Last Jedi was like I haven't seen it yet but from a lot of the stuff I hear about it, it's like it's such a shame it could have been so much better and such a I nice was, goodbye to a lot of the classic characters and it's a shame how it yeah, came out so it's a shame that they I hired this person to, during this time but yeah i was listening to sardana cast the podcast with um your movie sucks i hate everything and rock the movie maker and they had chris duckman on the last episode as a guest um and i think chris was the one who brought it up and they all acknowledge this is something that would never happen but it'd be a really cool thing for star wars to mm -hmm. do is if they just treated it like an event, like from now on, like, and again, they would obviously not do this because it'd be making three movies. What they said is make a make a new trilogy every decade. So make you do the three movies, you make a new trilogy every ten every decade. So you um, hmm. so you stop making movies. So like you, for each you so the, each generation can enjoy Star Wars, Wars has has their yeah, own version. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yes, that, and you also let it works as biz, uh, like in a business way too, because mm -hmm. it, like you let the hype build back up because people like you're not Solo letting people in, forget about the franchise uh, yeah. as well. Like yeah, Solo would be an interesting take for sure. 
Solo isn't doing, yeah, and like yeah, Solo yeah. isn't doing too well, and it's because they're trying to throw all these fucking Star Wars movies out. Eventually, we're gonna make it to a point where there's gonna be two Star Wars movies every single year. Like they're just, they're like they're getting, they're getting obnoxious with the Star Wars <laughs> movies. Um, it, really I like obnoxious. I like how they've already announced that they they're they they are doing a new trilogy. I think maybe that got canceled because of. You know the director and how well he did the last with the last Jedi. I don't know. It's a shame that it's him that's uh, putting all this together. But I do like the idea of a brand new trilogy and you know, you know that well, idea. There's like, still one more <laughs> movie to go. Yeah. I think the last Jedi is. Be- I think it's so funny too because everyone's acting like it's already over, even though there is one movie left because mm-hmm. everyone's just so fed up now. But I actually think the last Jedi is a way better movie than the Force Awakens because the Force mm-hmm. Awakens I found entertaining. But it did nothing. It did almost nothing new. At least the Last Jedi is its own movie. Like the Force Awakens is a reunion movie. That's and it's like, I mean, that's really all it feels like is it's just kind of a rehash. And I was okay with it being a rehash. I was, I went into it expecting a rehash. <laughs> um, and I guess for a really dedicated Star Wars fan, it could be disappointing that they didn't do anything new with it. But at the same time, I mean, um, I heard that the, I, like I heard that the Star scene Star at the beginning the of the movie when. She hands Luke the lightsaber. He just throws it behind him. That's a little bit yeah. of a joke. That's kind yeah. of. Like, huh. I like that. Did you not see the Last Jedi? No, not yet. I, it's coming to Netflix. What? I hear. Like I think this month. Really? You didn't? Oh my god! I thought you saw it. No, not yet. But it's yeah, coming no, to Netflix, so I'm excited. Ish. But yeah. That's that is at least gonna does. see it. Like, takes, yeah. He takes the lightsaber and just throws it, like, <laughs> and then walks off. Doesn't even say anything to her. I like Mark Hamill a lot more in The Last Jedi than I like him in the original trilogy because I think he actually has a personality in this movie. Something that Luke I hear Skywalker. he's very Mark Hamill and not Luke Skywalker, but I guess if it, I guess in your eyes that's like fine because he's at least not bland. And yeah, yeah, I think Luke Skywalker is like the worst part of the original trilogy. He's such a boring character. <laughs> I get your perspective. Well. Marcus, what do you think? Yeah, where I'm, I'm talking too much. What do you think? Uh, uh... I haven't really had any big issues, I mean, to complain about these past movies. I mean, I've been, I've found to enjoy them all. I mean, I'm not, I mean, I'm not as big of a Star Wars fan as most are, uh, but yeah. I'm really yeah, well, I like it and I enjoy them. I, I think they we, I, yeah, I think me and you are on the same page there, because I'm like, I'm kind of the same way. I'm not the biggest fan of them, but at the same time, I mean, I like the three I saw. I'd probably like Han Solo like enough. I think Solo seems the least promising to me, though, before. <laughs> I heard it doesn't I mean, really, like, from what people have said, like, it's not really something that, like, uh, what's it? Not stand out, or, like, doesn't leave too much of an impact. It doesn't really matter in the long run. It's just a movie. Just to well, throw in there for fan service. Know. I hear. In a way, it kind of does. You know I mean, the one thing I will say about this it is... It just exists. Like, that's it. The one thing I will say about this is that they brought back a character from the... I think it's the original trilogy that you yeah. were not... I know. It, that was a post credit scene I heard, right? right? I know what that is, actually. Not to spoil I anything, but yeah. Like that's yeah, cool. like when we did the screen for it, like everyone was just was like shocked. Yeah, I heard that was like the and best the part, despite that being a post credit scene. Or if I know who it is, exactly. who it, is. it was in it was in the like the last they appeared in like the last fifteen minutes or so of the okay. movie. I I know who it is by like I know who it is by like who's talking. Sorry, go ahead. No, you want to talk? I think there's a delay. I'm not I'm not trying to cut you <laughs> okay, off. Okay, okay. There's a delay. No, I was gonna say, you know, because of the, those like people who put the spoiler in the thumbnails, like why would they do that? You know, just oh, stuff yeah, like that. Fucking you know, Will Brower. <laughs> I just surprised him. But like, no. Uh, yeah, I, I love you, that. Will. But that shit pisses me off. <laughs> does, he, does he still do it? I'm still referring okay. to Han Solo's death, but like. <laughs> You might still wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. People haven't seen The Force Awakens, un- Mike. Come on now, it's 2018. I un- can't say that. I, un- I unsubscribed <laughs> to his second channel after that. He did it wow. the, like a week or two after the movie came out. I unsubscribed to his second channel because he did that. He, like, and I was like, okay, I'm no, I don't want to have stuff spoiled for me. 
<laughs> I get that. I feel the same way. A while back, He's gonna like years now. back, my, one of my friends they um they spoiled an episode of uh, Sleepy Hollow, and I, I got and then when I finally watched that episode that was they spoiled for me. I was just yeah, I was pissed. Yeah, a little yeah. bit annoying. Yeah. No, I find that very <laughs> aggravating when people do that. Like, uh, it's, I, I also hate the excuse that it's old. Um, like, oh, I'm allowed to spoil the ending of The Sixth Sense to you because you should have oh, seen it already. Yeah, yeah. Well, why haven't you watched the movies that I watched? There, there's <laughs> yeah, recently, recently on Twitch, they are they're running a bunch of classic Doctor Who episodes, and like you know, you see the chat and everything, and like. Not many people, but very rarely you would see, like, you know, a spoiler or something, and people would be like, guys, it's, like, how many years old? 50-plus years old now. Uh, it's not that much of a spoiler. You should have seen it by now. It's like, no, these are episodes from, like, what, 1960s, 1970s? We yeah. haven't seen these yet. What are you talking about? We, we, we weren't around. These, aren't, these don't play out. all the time on TV or on the internet. No. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's dumb. Um, I, um, yeah. yeah. Going way back way way back upgrade was awesome it's oh, yeah. far from a perfect far from a perfect movie um but What's i mean it's about it, even cinema, though, like synopsis i don't want to say too much about what it's about you guys should go into it blind it was a mm-hmm. very interesting movie i went in without watching a trailer like sometimes i just <laughs> risk it last year me Tariq, and fred went and saw free fire know nothing about it and it was okay like it wasn't a great movie it was it was kind of fun i felt like i got my money's worth and i left happy this one i just like me and gage were there and the only thing was kind of like when it was at the credits like we, me the music in the credits was so fucking good that i sat through them <laughs> and then i just i kind of looked at gage as okay like it took me a while to get into it but that was a pretty fucking awesome movie because it, it was it was a really cool movie it was um it does start off kind of slow but it is shot so well and the score is so good What's and it's it, like uh... one of those techno set kind of scores and i'm normally not into them but it just works so well in this movie what's it uh categorized as like horror or it's like a it's, no it's like a it's kind of like a sci-fi action yeah okay pretty yeah. much marcus seen a trailer. describes it better than what it actually is because it's a th- it's labeled as a thriller fantasy but an action sci-fi is a way better description um, yeah, I've seen a trailer, cause, and that's the real reason why I really that good. Wait, when, you cut out, you wait, 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 Marcus, cut out a bit when you were talking. Say that oh, again, say sorry. It again, Marcus. Yeah, sorry, you like cut out a bit. Oh, I said because I've seen, because I've actually seen the the trailer that they released for me, and that's why I see it. That you keep cutting out. So good. Hell? Discord just sometimes doesn't want us to finish. He, he like says, "I've seen the trailer," and then he just his audio just like cuts out until he stops talking. Um, I think I know what he's saying, but Marcus, say it one more time. You can time. translate if you need to. <laughs> that it, I wanted to see the the because since I saw the trailer for it and it looked so good, I really want to see it. So that's I, that's why I kind of got disappointed that the the my location and the one close yeah. to me didn't yeah. get it. Only the two Austin locations got it. Yeah, I'll look at the trailer. I'm curious. I mean, you said it's not a great film. You said, but I don't know. Just to see it. The same thing happened with with our really CQ with a uh, Hotel Artemis. If you've heard, if you if you heard of that, I, 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 I never, I never heard of it. But it was like I did see it, like the poster for it when I went to my theater yesterday, and I, it looked, it, it was a cool. Oh, looking is that the uh, Jodie Foster one with Dave Bautista, right? Yeah, basically it said, I think, I don't, it said like in the distant future. Mm. And the, so all these, it's, there's this place where all these criminals can go and recuperate, yeah. healed up. And I don't, I don't know exactly what goes on, but the trailer looks oh, good. Oh, I did see the trailer for that. Yeah. I did see that actually, yeah. Um, I mean... My cousin won't really wants to see it. I wasn't too wowed by the trailer, but you know that's just a trailer. You know what trailer looks really good? You know what mm-hmm. movie looks like it's gonna be a freaking masterpiece and not the biggest sellout I've ever seen of all time. Does Definitely not guess? sarcasm. Uh, Wreck It Ralph two. Cause <laughs> yeah. They, <laughs> yeah. It's just advertising <laughs> itself to just Disney. I don't know what the movie's about. 
two trailers and I don't know what the movie story is. <laughs> They're going <laughs> through the internet, Mike. Troopers. It's going to be everywhere. Iron Man. Iron Man, Kermit the Frog, and Stormtroopers all in a movie together. Congratulations, Disney. You have taken I didn't any see, excitement out of I didn't see Iron Man or Kermit, but... <laughs> I guess uh, yeah, Iron Man flies over the screen briefly, and Kermit it just shows like a like it's one of the panels. He's just like a like a bill head. It's and not I, really. I hate to be this guy for this type of conversation, or also in in a pretty gay conversation. But like, hey, that princess scene was pretty fun. Hey, that was good fan service. I mean, come <laughs> they, on, they, they did a, that was they fun. Did a very they got the original job. voice actresses back for all the princesses. I heard. So that's yeah, the ones that passed away. Yeah, but um or were too old to voice the characters anymore. Yeah. But um, I will say that they did a great job redesigning all of them. Yeah. Um, I think they did an outstanding job with that. And I do think it's very funny of them to make a nice little feminist comment at the end of that when all of them represent a time <laughs> when <laughs> represent the thing that you're criticizing. Yeah. <laughs> That what and the that and the first trailers joke with the kids screaming at the screen when something traumatic happens. Those two are like the only good jokes. Funny. Yeah, that, that was funny. That was funny. Well, it's a shame like, that each trailer only has one joke that like actually lands well. But again, like they're the, trailers, but still. It's like the Disney hair, like Disney showing off all the stuff they own. Yeah, <laughs> is their is their solution to nobody having a personal connection to the internet. Yeah. I mean, we have a connection to the people on the internet, but like Wreck-It Ralph One was great because we all we grew up with those video game characters. We care about those video game characters. Nobody care. Nobody like sees the YouTube logo when it's like, ah, oh, you the YouTube logo. Like you need to have like some fucking people from YouTube in there. You need to have, and even then, it's not nostalgic. It's it actually a lot of it just represents stuff that we hate about ourselves. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's kind of like if you ever saw the brain dump on the emoji movie, how Max kind of described that emojis are not something yeah. that we are um, hoping that has value to us as kids. You're cutting out a um, lot, Mike. Games. And, am I good now? Yeah, you're good now. Okay, because it's like um, Toy Story had toys, Wreck-It Ralph had video games, Who Framed Roger Rabbit had cartoons. This is all stuff that connects to us, but Wreck-It Ralph 2 has just like a bunch of fucking websites. Like, yeah, we use them, but... I remember when the first Wreck-It Ralph movie came out, and I was like, hey, cool, they had Sonic in there. I, I can't wait for the sequel when they have Mario, or Mario and Sonic. I think that was even promised to us. And then it was like, it was. This, the first trailer came out, and it's about the internet, and it's just like... What? I want more video games, please. No. And now, and now, um, but like, yeah, now the Disney stuff is yeah. their, um, is their reason. Is like, it's their kind of like <laughs> replacement for the video game characters. Because they have to have like some cameos in Wreck-It Ralph. Like, listen, in a way, it is kind of funny, like, Disney advertising themselves. Like, that alone is hysterical to me. But, um, I feel like at the, by the end of the movie, it's going to be obnoxious. And it's just going to like gonna leave a bad taste in your mouth unless if they but the trailer left a bad taste in my mouth yeah. i think it's very gross what but it's doing. but the thing is it is only a trailer yeah i gotta keep that in mind yeah i'm, I'm gonna stay open-minded is, but what i will say is the, i felt the exact same way when i saw the trailer for the lego movie and then the lego movie was one of the best animated movies ever made yeah so did, did you see the second tra- <laughs> the second yeah uh, movie trailer I did, and I'm once again I'm left with a bad impression. But I, yeah. I'm I'm excited for it anyway because the first movie I hated the trailer, and um, and the movie was great. The second trailer, the and the movie, the trailer for the second movie does look better than the trailer for the first. It's movie, definitely something unexpected, starting off like in a Mad Max kind of world. Like that's okay, that's pretty cool. It, yeah. It's like actually like in a post-apocalyptic world. Like it didn't end like happily ever after at the yeah. end of the first movie. And then, just, and like. Like, literally, the main characters are worn, like, light, and they're, they're still not dark. It's still kind of- it's, I find it kind of funny, like, a, a movie called The Lego Movie technically ended dark. That Like, that's what the second movie's intro is kind of telling us, and it's like, it's kind of funny. It's still a Lego movie, I feel like, like, the, with the tone. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for it because of how good the first one was. Um, but I, what I will say is, like, the first Lego movie was such a special movie, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like, it was such a surprise. Like, it, it surprised everyone. Like, even, like, the harshest film critics liked the Lego movie. Everyone liked the Lego movie. Um, 
And it was just, yeah, it was just such an enjoyable film and it had like, it was actually kind of meaningful at the end of it too. <laughs> so I don't think we need it. It just seems like such an unneeded sequel. Like just end on a high note because I don't think the second movie is going to be as good as the first one. I think you just get something that's serviceable for the second yeah. one. The Lego company is very, you know, money hungry with a lot of their stuff. Oh yeah, yeah they have their franchise now. They have had three. This is actually the fourth Lego movie, technically. Do they yeah. own Ninjago's? Um, I oh, think they do. Yeah, Lego Ninjago. Yeah, they made a ton of those. Yeah, they made the they made a movie for it too, which was one of the. They have a bunch of shorts. They had Batman. They had show. <sighs> yeah. Um, that's what was so, that was what was so surprising about the first one, though, because it felt like a corporation movie, and then it turned out to be something really great, like. Mm. It just proved it just everyone was proven wrong with that one because i don't i think little little kids were the only ones excited for the first one when it was announced um it was just such a nice surprise like i, I was really because I, I mean I, I watched it when i was out on dvd and i didn't even hear that people liked it so i was like oh yeah this this will be I, like i started watching my little cousin like and i was like yeah this is gonna be great and then it was like that was absolutely outstanding that everything about that was good um oh man and i watched uh did either of you ever see the 40 year old virgin yeah yeah classic i watched uh i watched mm-hmm. it uh yesterday and it was okay yeah <laughs> classic as in your you know your teenage mindset loves it and then when you're an adult yeah you're like, it's I mean, all right. I, uh, you know what it it was kind of just your typical comedy movie. Like, obviously, the filmmaking well, wasn't... What would you, like, you think of that hair waxing? Isn't that, like, a, a classic scene? I mean, come on. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 did, I, did, I did laugh a fair amount of times during the movie. Like, I do think two hours is probably too long for it, but... <laughs> yeah. Um, and, I mean, I like everyone in it, too. Like, I really do like Paul Rudd, Steve Carell, Seth Rogen sometimes... Guys. Seth Rogen sometimes. Yeah. <clears throat> I think Seth Rogen can be very funny. I just think, <laughs> I just think a lot of his movies are terrible. <laughs> I did yeah, like some moments. I, I that, that one's a controversial opinion because a lot of people really hate that movie. I did enjoy Sausage Party. That was a movie. Switching <laughs> over to a different topic. Uh, I'll try to get this out before the event happens, but you know, E three is next week. If anyone, wants to, if anyone wants to hype themselves up for anything that they might want to see from any company, go ahead. Um, I there's a few things they could do that might make me get a switch, but we'll see. Yeah, the, I I actually do own a switch right now, and I'm excited just to see what Nintendo's announcements are. There have there has been I saw. I saw it from Twitter that someone said that a supposed leak from what Nintendo might be yeah. talking about at E3. I, f- I think they're uh, playing Fortnite out, which is kind yeah, of they no that was then that that was kind of obvious because two there weren't a while ago the I can't think of the name of the because someone a company that does ports. They announced that they're working on. That they had tweeted out that they were working on Fortnite. So I think that that's well, for sure. And that was one of the things that was that was late. I think it would have been smarter. I think it would have been smarter not to wait till E3 to announce it and just do it when it was still popular. Yeah. But I mean, the kids still like it these days. So I mean, why not? But you know what? You know what I'm excited for, and I'm like. It's the only thing I can really think of now that I'm excited for. Lego The Incredibles. <laughs> for the Switch. Um, the <laughs> fucking Spyro remaster, because I, I already have an Xbox One now. And They're I making the a remaster? Share, turned off. What? They're making a remaster to Spyro? Yeah, the Spyro trilogy. Hmm. Oh, and, yeah, uh, I saw that. I, um, I have a game share turned on with Gage, and I have an Xbox One now, so I'm like... Uh, he already purchased it, and it's already on my games list. I just can't play it until September. Mm. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm just staring at it <laughs> every day. Every day. Every Release day, you know. already. Release. 
It's every day, bro, with the Disney channels, bro. I can't wait for uh, Smash, dude. Which, yes, it will be Smash oh, 5. Oh, yes. Uh, it I will be Smash 5. I'm telling you, it is. It would be stupid just to put a port now. And not the first year of the Switch. It's not a port. You'll see. You'll see. It's not. <laughs> I really hope I'm wrong. Here's the thing. I'm not gonna be rubbing. It would it in. be it's a stupid thing to even say it's a port at, at this time. No, it's not! Yes it is! Why would they it's not do it during the first year? Why would they wait until now and not Mario last year's E3? It came out years ago and then it came out as a port for the Because Switch. that was the first year of the Switch. Why would they wait till the second year to then put out Smash, which is a port? They're probably doing a lot of extra stuff with it. I think they were planning plan on putting like the fucking ice climbers back into it too, because there was like Errors with a that. port just to add in a few things. The a port exclusively <laughs> for the reason of adding the ice climbers. If it's <laughs> Wait, what? I can look. About? I can see them adding things like the board game mode from the Wii U version or Smash Run from the 3DS version. But like, other than that, like I think it's a brand new Smash game. I really do. If, I hope you're right. I just if, don't think it will be because they never get a new Smash game out this quick. Marcus, I'm sorry. Go ahead. We'll see. No, you're good, but. Honestly, it could be, it, from just from the little small tease, it probably will be like a different Smash game altogether. I, to me, it looked, it looked like. How they ma they changed their logo. Wait, is that what you say? They changed the logo, right? With the, the Smash symbol? Yeah, that, that was everything? pretty much talking about, yeah. The whole, they the wouldn't logo, change the, the logo if they weren't trying to rebrand a bit. Like, they're rebranding a bit with the Smash games. Like, it's a brand, I, it's gotta be. I, Stuart thinks it's a new game, too, I think. Yeah. There's a lot Stuart. of evidence pointing to a new one, I'm telling you. Uh, I'll look up. I'm just going to type in evidence that it's a new game because <laughs> I haven't seen any new... You I, don't I, have to just wait a week. The trailer with the Inklings looked like the same... I mean, it looked very similar to the ones they were doing when the Wii U one was coming out. Because that's the trail. They got the same team, the trailer people. I'm sure, it's but... Not, doesn't mean this is the same game. It's been a different, there's been a slightly different style. It's in still every part of the Smash same Earth. generation, but I think it's, you know, that. God, it's hard to. I can't make a good point there, but like that, it's just, it's just, it is I what it is. My my number one reason for thinking it's going to be a poor is because, mm. and you know, maybe, and maybe like it's just changing now. Maybe Smash Bros. is becoming mainstream enough to where they're going to make it like they they're just going to make an, the games more frequently now mm. but it's always been like a seven to eight year long wait before i, th new I think new nintendo Smash especially Smash. recently has done a lot of unpredictable unpredictable stuff because their fans were always like oh it's this is predictable this is going to happen at this time and whatever and um you know it's it it makes sense it's it's following the pattern of being unpredictable predictably you know what i mean if they do make a new Smash game, I hope they add the story back in. I under, I know not everyone was crazy for that. I was thinking that last night, yeah. I would love I that. actually had a lot of fun with Subspace Emissary, or however you say it, when it came out for the Wii. Like, me and my brother just got on that, and we would just we played it for, like, hours on end trying to get to the end, and it was just... I loved that. I had so much fun doing that. You know, if, it, if it's a port of the Wii U version, but with a brand new story mode... I don't know if I would still consider it a port. I would like. I think I would still consider it a Smash Five because it's like it's it adds in a whole other I thing. Would. I don't know. I would I would consider it Smash Four with a campaign added. But they've also got new like Link is brand new. He's probably gonna have new move sets because he's Breath of the Wild Link now. Yeah, I don't know. Look, if they are doing yeah. Smash Five. Put Banjo Kazooie in. That's all I'm saying. Put on Banjo. They got those remastered games coming to the Switch, so possibly they're partnering with Banjo. Fucking Crash people. is coming to the Switch, so I wonder oh if yeah, Crash. Sorry, yeah, Crash, not Banjo. Yeah, the whole. Oh, I get those two confused all the time. I feel like after the weirdness of Smash Four, like the characters that that made, and you can't really dismiss any characters anymore. Yeah. Nobody expected Ban Bayonetta. No one expected Pac Man. No one expected Cloud. Ryu, no button. Especially no one expected Cloud. Dude, I would love the story mode with, like, you know how in Brawl, like, when you have Mario, Link, Kirby, Pikachu, Sam's, like, lining up and stuff? You just have yeah. stuff like that with Mario, Mega Man, Sonic, and Pac Man. Like, oh my god. It's yeah. gonna blow your mind if that day ever comes. 
the reason that they didn't do a story mode in the fourth game was the dumbest thing ever. Do you know what the reason they? was? No. Because, um, because this, some people were uploading the cutscenes to YouTube. That that was the, that might not even be the reason, but that was the reason they gave. <laughs> that's dumb. That's, good. Yeah, that's like, any, dumb, like any game, any, any movie. Just it happens. Deal with it. Oh yeah, you're gonna upload my cutscenes to YouTube. Well, fuck you. I'm not gonna make them anymore. <laughs> when when my before I even got Smash Brawl, which, which was my first Smash game I ever played, like I I remember um, it was like middle school. I went to a friend's house and they had Brawl. And they showed me the first time all those cutscenes, especially like the big battle with the airships and the lasers and Kirby riding on the star thing, like that really big epic battle cutscene. And I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. And that made me want to get the game myself to experience that, you know, in order and everything. I owned every single one of the games. At one point, I had 64, Melee, Brawl, both 3DS and Wii U. And the only one I don't have anymore is 64. And... God, I regret that. Because hmm. I like, I feel like that's such a, I feel like that's valuable now. Yeah. And I don't have it anymore. I don't even know why I don't have it. Anymore. People that can't sell those old games for like, you know, double or triple the price now. You know. I do yeah, have a lot of sixty-four games. I have a Banjo Kazooie. I have Mario sixty-four. <clears throat> what else do I have? I have like a bunch of stupid games too because. We, we got a 64, but like my favorite game, though, and it still is my favorite 64 game, I don't care what you say, is Mario Party 3. I fucking <laughs> loved it. I hated Mario Kart 64. I hated, like, a lot, and I can't play Mario, I can't even play Smash Bros. on the 64 anymore, but, because it's too slow, it's such a slow-paced game, because it was so, you know, it was just old, they weren't, it wasn't as developed yet. But Mario Party 3 is still the best Mario Party game I ever played, and I don't know what happened to my 64, and I then that upsets me, because I can't find it anywhere. I I was listening to a I podcast just, yesterday. I had my cartridges still, though. <laughs> I was listening to a podcast <laughs> yesterday, and, like, so when, they were talking about Nintendo, and they were mostly, like, you know, saying negative stuff about it, but, like, Someone brought up a good point about, like, the Mario Party games. Like, if Nintendo wanted to, like, you know, really step up their game and really make everyone happy, like, put out a Mario Party game for the Switch, but that had online multiplayer. Yeah. And not... Because, like, mm. Nintendo does a lot of local multiplayer stuff. And it's like, hey, look, I don't I don't have real-life friends in person. I don't want to play with them locally. They're all, they're all in other countries, other states, whatever. I want to play with them online. That makes more sense. And it's like, yeah, that would be amazing. You know, have, would be. having a bunch I mean, of either classic mini games or brand new mini games, just like have it online though. Like there has to... been. Um, I saw, I think I saw this one on Twitter too, because obviously it's already been announced that Nintendo, Timber releasing, doing an online thing for Switch, and part of that with it is gonna be you can do play a lot of uh, classic games. Yeah. I don't think I would like. I don't know, I'm not really like a 8-bit classic game kind of guy. Like, most of the games that they'll put out for that, I'm, I don't really get. But, like, you know, I still play Splatoon 2, PvE. I really love that. And it's like, you know, Mario Kart 8 occasionally. You know, stuff like that. It's a shame that they put out, they're doing the uh, online service, but it's only 20 bucks. So. Yep. But don't you agree about, like, Mario Party online multiplayer? Like, how amazing that would be, Mike? If they ever did that. Pretty fun, yeah. yeah. My a favorite lot, thing. A lot of people complain it's just always local, and then Nintendo always like does that with their games, local multiplayer, not so much online. If I've, yeah, if I've told this story before, I apologize. Um, I used to play with Pinsack all the time, Mario Party Three, and we'd have like these really long games. And there was this one map called Waluigi Island on Mario Party Three, <laughs> where there was this one island that you could go to. Where every single where every single tile did the exact same thing, but it changed every single round. So one round all of them would be blue spots, and that gives you three coins. And one round all of them would be red spots, and that make you lose three coins. So on, so and then one round all of them would be chance time, and chance time is the biggest way to screw someone over in that game. So I was doing just dicking around the entire game. I had zero stars. Pinsack was doing extremely well. He had like eight or nine stars. And then I was I kept waiting on the island for chance time to come up. It was the biggest dick move ever. I fully acknowledge that. I would not do this again <laughs> if I played. 
and I got chance. I just kept doing chance time like as many times as I could, and eventually I did chance time and stole every single coin and star Nick had. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and it was near the very end of the game too, so he didn't have enough time to get back. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about you, but like you know, I, I would I would keep doing that. I don't know why you're saying you would never do that again. That's a that's a that's a that's a it's not an exploit. It's, it's just part of the game, right? Yeah. Easy win. The game. The entire point of Mario Party is just to be the <laughs> biggest dick you can. Yeah, losing fun. <laughs> Constantly screwing other people over. Yeah. Um, isn't there a DS version of that game? I think few. there is. There's a few, yeah. There's a few. Yeah. They re- their mo- most recent Mario Party, I think, was like getting a bunch of classic games all together for a 3DS. Yeah, stuff. They did a mini game thing, but they didn't actually add a board to it. <laughs> they just, just made mini it games, really? mini game. Oh. I mean, I think there is a board version, but it's like a very half assed board mm. um and even like it doesn't function the same way the game is supposed to they i i don't like what they do with any of the new games and they need to go back to the class i mean i understand i'm always up for new things but they had, had a format that they completely screwed up mario party 8 they started trying some new things out and some of the new stuff they tried was actually kind of fun mario party is my favorite because it's like one of the few I've, I've played but it's actually it has the most fun mini games in my opinion like there's a lot of yeah, games there but... Um, I mean, it's my least favorite of the ones I've actually owned, but I mean, mm. it has um, it has some enjoyable stuff in it. But it's like so gimmicky with the mini games. It's like mm. all just the using the Yeah, yeah. Um, Mario Party Three is a masterpiece. Mario Party Two is probably second. I've never played one, four, or five or six, but I played seven, and seven was outstanding too. I mean, Pinsack played that all the time on the GameCube when we were just little children. Yeah. We need to do that again, me and Pinsack. We need to get, like, a capture card and do it again. The Mackle and Nick Mario Party 7 reunion show. Do what you <laughs> just, just point the camcorder at the TV. Yeah, just Having point the camcorder. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Yeah. Whew. Good stuff. Any of you guys excited about any PlayStations or Xboxes? Anything? I honestly don't. The only, I literally the only consoles I own. I don't own any other console besides the Nintendo. Yeah. So I don't I have, I have a stupid Wii U that's collecting dust all the time, and an <laughs> Xbox One that I actually do enjoy. I would honestly love to, I mean, have an Xbox or PlayStation just some of the games that are on them. Yeah. Play. But most, surprisingly, most of that, some of it's actually been ported over to the Switch, like, stuff like I, 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 I plan on getting others, but like the one I, at least the first one I got that's been ported on ports was um, Little Nightmares. And they have they have little nightmares on there like they put they put the outlast games on there mm. they put some stuff on there like but um but i still like to, there's other games i would love to see hope i mean pour it over but if not then like i said there's some games i would on those consoles i would love to have the console for so i could play it I hate how, like, like, that Detroit Become Human game, I think it's called, is a PlayStation exclusive. Like, I'd I actually really want to play that. Looks really cool. You ever heard of that game? It's, it's recent. It's a, like, it's, a no, it's like, you know, a bunch of, it's a, like another AI story, like, revolting against humans, but I don't know. Look, It's like, there's many different paths it can go. It's, stop being sarcastic little shit, all right? God damn. I'm sorry. What's wrong with you? <laughs> uh, it looks really cool. Look. Like, honestly, it's a game. It's like one of those movie kind of games, but it's like it has so many different paths it can go down. Like, one little mistake can, like, branch into it. And it shows you at the end of, an, of a chapter, like, all these little things that you did compared to what you could have done. And it's like, whoa. Like, there's so many different paths. It's amazing. But it's it's kind of like, like uh, whoa. Well, eight hour game. It's not the same way, but like, um, what was it? Uh, I always forget the name of it. 
There's a lot of different games lot. like that, but I mean, like, the... just, like it shows you that all that all those branches. It's really cool. I was supposed to remove it. It was for the Xbox. It was it had the butterfly effect. It was the, with the Wendigos. There was a cabin. No. <laughs> IDK. No, I right know. I played. So kind of like, but that's what I'm picturing a little bit, but not completely the same game. I mean, it's made the same way. Wonder. Well, one thing I'm kind of curious about. I don't know if we'll learn anything at E3 with the Undertale port for the Switch. I'm wondering if they're gonna. Yes, have... that I'm. That I'm hoping to get news about because I'm. Oh, I thought it was already cool. out. You uh, uh cut out for me, Marcus. Oh, um, yeah. I'm hope I'm hoping for news on that on the Undertale port. Too. I want because when I saw the announcement for it, I was I got excited. I I was excited too, but if they do nothing with it and the only difference is it's on the Switch now, I don't think I'm that interested in it because I'm fine with the. I feel like that's what it is, but also uh, I was gonna say like I thought they already put it out like. No, they, they it was it, just right? that because in the announcement it said. Wait, what? Well, you cut you cut out. In in the announcement trailer it said coming. Oh, it still says coming soon. There's no no date yet. I thought there was. No. Wow, that's BS. It's been a while since that. I th I'd say at E3 would be a good time, but at the same time, E3 just to say about Undertale and Fortnite, among uh, many other things. I mean, it's not the only stuff, but at the same time, it's like those are, those are definitely going to be the all right, whatever. Just going to give those the cold shoulder kind of news, but I I hope they do just like throw in a little like maybe like just an extra boss or two in there. I'd get it if they do that. Hmm. If they did, if they, like, it's, I mean, it's a short, it's a short game, and I like the game. But if they like, I mean, you know, just some, just yeah. add a little, like something lighter, or maybe make, make it can play for hard mode because you can set the game to hard mode in Undertale, but it only lets you go for the first like stage of the game. You know, honestly, maybe because they didn't like say a release date yet, is because they were trying to work on little things that they could have added. Possibly, you never know. That and the two, because just uh, just the way the mechanics of Undertale work, is they gotta make make that work on the Switch too. Well, don't they have yeah. it on other consoles though? Undertale. Mm, no, I don't think no. Oh, it was only PlayStation. A PC I'm pretty game. sure, right? No. No, it was a straight PC game. game. Wow, I had no idea. I thought it was already a console game. I didn't know. Nope. I mean that's easy with just the analog stick, just to move the uh, hard was around. Interested, but... was interested in it for uh, Wii U apparently, but like they couldn't like make it work on the Wii U. Yeah. Had to add in like an extra screen over the touchscreen and everything. The Wii U and Wii 3DS days stuff like that was like very strong, unlike other third-party companies. I got the Wii U at the most unfortunate time I could have gotten the Wii. U. What? I got. The Wii with the most unfortunate time I could have gotten the Wii U. It was a bad console and I got it at the end of it. Such a waste. Too many games. Yeah. The Switch, there's like there's like I've only gotten like five games from it but like th those five games I still feel like they're very fun. Uh, even though one of them is a port, but like, you know, with the stuff they're coming out, like they've already announced Smash, the new Pokemon game. It's pretty casual, but I'll still buy it because I'm a Pokemon fan, whatever. Yeah. Like I don't know. It's like I feel like over time. I feel yeah, like cause I, I mean, because the, like going to the Pokemon games, they they are working on an actual Pokemon yeah. game that's supposed to come out it's next not, yeah. year. It's not the main main game they promised, which is good. Like this is just something for us to uh, play while we wait, but like yeah, and it's still and they still do look interesting. Yeah, ex yeah, except for the wild Pokemon mechanic. I don't know why they're doing this, but yeah, I mean, I don't think it'd be hard to just throw in attacks. Oh, I don't. I'm confused. Hard. I'm worried about like how because like before fighting the first gym, you need a trainer Pokemon to level up at least over twelve, thirteen, I think it is for like Onix when you fight him. How are you gonna do that if you can't? fight wild pokemon only trainers can you how often can you refight trainers too like how's that gonna work because i've been playing moon again by the way 
Uh, oh, I think it's on. I'm on the fire trial now. Oh no, the grass trial now, which is the what? Which which is where I stopped last time because it was hard. That's a, the boss but, um, there. People say is usually pretty tough, but we'll see yeah. how you do. Um, I don't know. I'm training a fire Pokemon now, and it's uh, the worst ever. But it's like also the only one I can get in that which area. One? What Pokemon did you get for Fire type? I don't even remember because I gave it a nickname right away. It was a look right. <laughs> like this weird lizard looking thing. Oh, oh no. Oh wait, did you get. Is yours male or female? Because if it's female, it can evolve it. If it's male, it can't. Mm -hmm. I, th I think it's the land that you're talking about. The black. I think, purple mine, I think mine's female. Okay. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe it's. Wait, it might be male because I named it Mr. Mosby. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, it's gonna stay. I, 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 this, time, this time I decided to name all of them after sitcom characters. So but, my um, yeah, you gotta go ahead, sir. My uh, I mean, I have like a bunch. Like some are in a box right now. I have like you know, I have my main six. It's like I have Cheng from Community. I also have Abed from Community, which um, Cheng is Poplio. Or whatever the evolved form of that is now. Then I have yeah. whatever that bird thing you get at the very beginning of the game that you can get in form that's Abed. Huh. I have uh, Charlie from It's Always Sunny. I'm not even going to name what Pokemon. I'm just going to name the names. I have Gail from Last Man on Earth. I have Mr. Mosby from The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. And I have Jerry from Jerry Seinfeld. Didn't you say you also have Leslie Nope? <laughs> I did have Leslie Nope, but Leslie Nope has been sent to the box. <laughs> um, I was gonna say before, like regarding like the Switch and like you know, if if it's worth getting and like what the amount of games it has now, it's like I I just hope that E three they'll announce a lot of you know s interesting stuff that'll make you, people want to get a Switch now. Like uh, there's there's you know the argument that's like oh the Switch with its this many games and it's like. You know, as a Switch owner, I can kind of agree, kind of can't, because, like, even though it has a few amount of games that, like, I think are worth getting, they're still really fun games, and I, their, their replay value is high, I feel like. Yeah. But um, it does need more, so. I, I mean, know. yeah. I mean, with all the games that they're... The ports and all the, like, the stuff that they're releasing the, to, that you can just download, there are plenty of games that... Depending on your taste in games, yeah, there's plenty of games for everyone. And there's a lot of stuff on the eShop that are like stuff. very, you know, uh, you know, they're hard to find stuff, not really as mainstream. And you gotta kind of look in the eShop and see what might interest you. But um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, if they had like, if they can't like did what they did with Arms. Not that I liked Arms at all. I didn't really buy it, but like. If they come out with any new IPs, that would be great. Like brand new games that just like try it out more. The deal with Splatoon, it worked out. They even got a sequel now. They tried Arms, didn't work, but they could still try again with a new IP. It's possible. Yeah. What if uh, um if, if there was a duck cast video game? What would it be about? What would the game? What type of game would it be? It would be like, like one of those. It would be one of those. Uh, it would be like one of those rare eShop games you would find that clearly looked like they were made with paint in front for a PC. <laughs> like there's some games on there that's like you're just like, how did this get on the Switch eShop? It's like literally like stick figure stuff that's like you know, it's yeah, there's one white thing I've and seen. black and like blue and that's the colors. It's really bad. My it's cousin, like a cowboy game, I think. A stick cowboy game that's yeah. supposed to be coming out soon. Within I'm still waiting months, on that one shooter game for the Switch that, like, it was it was promised for December of 2017, then it was promised for spring of 2018, and still there's nothing yet on it. Uh, what was it called? Morphe's Law? I've talked about this a few times on DuckCast. I'm like, I adore this game, and I know very little about it, but what I've seen is I, I just love it. It's like, you know, you shoot your enemies, and each enemy has their giant towers, red and blue and like you know you just you shoot your enemies in the tower the enemy's tower grows taller and the one that grows the tallest by the end wins and there's different weapons <laughs> and grenades and everything it's it's very mexican themed and you're playing as skeletons and it looks fun looks really it's very attack on titan looking too i don't know one game that because like when i first got the switches i got switch as a gift to myself for my birthday um because my mom was going to give me a game that she thought came out that December, but really it comes out this December was a 
Yoshi. I'm not interested in the Yoshi games. I don't know what the I'm big not, I'm, whoop is I'm about. I'm curious to see what it is, though. Just because there's very little known about it right now. Aren't most Yoshi uh, games that they're just kind of the same thing? Levels with, like, 2D platform levels with, like, you know, Yoshi. you get the fruits and you get eggs behind you and that's throw the eggs. Like, that's every Yoshi game. It always looks know. like that. You want to Animal Crossing, though. Uh, hmm? Animal Crossing throws in some, like, new things every time, though. Like, more furniture. It, and It looks different every time. Three games to throw in something new. There's a new leaf did a lot. Yeah, new leaf did do a lot, but it was yeah. the first game to do a lot of new stuff. Yeah. Yoshi just looks the same though. Animal Crossing, like at least each town is laid out differently every time, and like it's not a two D platformer either. It's like a like, very expansive. I do like Animal and Crossing. And new animals and everything. It looks cool. And clearly, when they try to do something very different, it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> the amiibo game they made where. How <laughs> was that? Oh, yo, they should announce Animal Crossing at E3. It's been a while since, like, New Leaf was the last Animal Crossing game. So, like, I think they're going to announce. They missed their chance with the Wii U. They really showed with the Switch already. Second year of the Switch, they they've got it by now. I would be amazed if they didn't announce it uh, next week. Mm-hmm. They probably will have something. They did have they did have games for the Wii U though. It just they weren't good games. Yeah. They did they did spin off games for the Wii. I'm not a Metroid fan, but they did a, ne- a tease it last year, so maybe they'll show some footage this time around. I, s- I don't good. remember how I came. I think because it it appeared. I think one day when I was looking at you, you're cutting out Marcus. You know, the map was um, apparently they're bringing Hello Neighbor to the Switch. Ah. Uh. Which is going to be interesting. <laughs> that game, I I see clips about it, and like I I just get terrified, like. I don't even want to play. It's like it's just that kind of game. It's like it's very cartoony, but I I would still be freaked out just playing it. Just like oh god, is he is he right behind me? Is he, oh god, it's like I don't know. <laughs> I just don't like watching people play because I feel like I'm the one playing it. It's just very eh, manga s, you know. Yeah. Uh, no, they're releasing. Uh, if you've seen the trailer, the Adult Swim is putting a game. Hmm. I mean, they put a South Park game on the Switch already, so I mean, it's not surprising. Well, oh, that they, yeah, like that's... anything could be on the Switch by now. Yeah, it's it's something with like it's called it's pool pool something pool. Huh. Let's bring fuck Mr. Hatcher to the Nintendo Switch. Let's bring let's cook the video game to the Nintendo Switch. Go. That's, that's, I think that's actually one of Dude, the... that should be a segment. That should be like a mini game in the Duckcast mini game, like a let's cook segment thing. Like yeah. that it makes sense, man. Okay, so who would be the final boss for a game? I think Barry Boner. Barry Boner. Yeah. Yeah, Barry Boner. Like I mean, I feel like Barry Throws Boner jelly beans at you. Yeah, I feel like Barry Boner would be like the main villain of the whole thing. Like he, he'd be a... it, it turns into like a 2D platformer, like a Mega Man kind of thing. And you're shooting at him while he's like floating around the stage, shooting at yeah. you. That'd be cool. We um, yeah. who else would be a boss in our RPG or mini Smarty mini Smart. platform or whatever? Big purple head. Uh, Willie the Moose, a beloved but short. He could be. He could be. No, no, no. He could be. He could be a skin. All right. Customizable skin, <laughs> the DLC, because no one wants it. Um, Zero ninety nine. What about like the people who guessed on Duckcast? Would they be boss battles, or would they be like like yeah. little assistants? <laughs> Make it like a very Mega Man type of game where each boss, like yeah, at the end of each level, has its own guest. From well, what's Duckcast. Marcus's? What's, Marcus, what's your abilities then in our video game? What do you My do about us? <laughs> Mm. You're a movie theater guy now. You can throw popcorn at him. You can usher them <laughs> out of the theater. Okay, so Marcus is the first boss in the game. <laughs> the first. My, whole, my whole town that was just like a movie. Go You're through. the weakest boss. That's what Mike told you. What it, no, I'm just kidding. I'm saying if we go with the popcorn move. Uh, Chris should be the first boss, but she, he should have a boss battle for every single episode he appeared in. <laughs> he should be like a recurring boss battle, boss battle who gets more desperate. So, so the amount of episodes that we have is how many levels there are in the game? Not specifically. I'm just saying for Chris specifically. You should have like five appearances as a boss. <laughs> Fred and Gage make 
short appearance appearances, I guess, since they except for Fred, I guess. He appears in more. Gage was like Spectacular can be the second to last boss. I was thinking if oh yeah, Spectacular. What does he even look like? Is he a squirrel? Half human, half squirrel kind of guy? He sounds like the type of guy, Spunktacular. No, Spunktacular is just like this annoying blonde kid. Hmm. Cody has a draw on the Spunktacular. Oh, Tariq was on an episode. Chris and Olivia were on an episode. Maybe Chris and Olivia could be like Alan. They're like the real talk people. Or maybe what if Chris and Olivia appear in the next Smash game as the Ice Climbers. <laughs> Think about that. Zach for Smash. Remember that, that noise? One? Marcus. Yeah. You vaping over there? Or what? No. What is that? <laughs> sacks up the boss. Sounds like the steam of smoke covers the fight. Um, no, like um, what was I about to say? Remember Zach for Smash? Zach? Nope. Our... I said I don't want. To be, I remember that. Yeah, Marcus remembers that. That was <laughs> the campaign to get Zachary and Folkman into Smash Brothers. <laughs> that was stupid. That was great. <laughs> My response for that was stupid. Oh, that's still up. That's all still up, right? I need that footage, actually. Why? Why? What do you Isn't mean? Are you doing something recently for that? No. <laughs> don't. Make a new meme. Marcus for Smash there. Now make no, a brand new video. I'm not doing Zach for Smash again. I just need that clip, like a small clip from both of my video and your video. Oh. It's, it's Flashbacks. Fun. It's unrelated. <laughs> it's, I'm it's working with, on a with E3 and awesome. Smash coming up. It's unrelated. I think really for now. secret uh, reasons. <laughs> I'm working on a I'm working on a video, and Austin's the only one who knows about it right now. Oh, God. But it will be revealed soon. Uh, <laughs> but we'll but, but like it more than you like the Zipa virus. <laughs> But, 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 why do you need Zach for Smash videos? I actually need it for a very, very minor purpose. It's not even something making fun of you. It's, uh, at least that part, at least that part isn't something making fun of you. <laughs> at least that part. <laughs> the, um, in, the, in our RPG, Barry Boner should just be the second to last boss, actually. Based on whether you pick Michael or Zach, that should determine the final boss, because we turn <laughs> each other that would be good, actually. Yeah, yeah. You pick Zach. Michael's the final boss. What was that PC game, A Way Out? If you ever heard of that one, where like it's a multiplayer uh, game where you with the split screens. Out? Yeah. I have that on my Xbox just because of Game Share. I, I have literally have don't play a it? single game. I just have Game Share turned on, so I've all engaged just did. Have you ever played A Way Out all the way through? Nope. Nope. But it is on my Xbox. And it isn't. <laughs> So I might play. I don't know how long Gage is keeping that game share on though, because he's, I won't he's spoil keeping it nothing off. then. But well, yeah, I've seen. Play. I've seen the game. It look. It's very fun. It Gage very might fun. be turning that game share off though eventually, and that's going to be a sad day for me. But it means <laughs> perfectly justified to do it because I'm. I literally contribute nothing to the game share. It's he buys games. I play the games he buys. <laughs> 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 And like, I mean, we and like we're like both of us are cool about it. It wasn't like we agreed to do this and we we're both going to contribute. He was just very nice and turned his game share on. But he did tell me eventually he's going to give it to something like he's going to turn it off and give the game share to someone else. And I'm, <laughs> obviously, I'm fine with that. But I got to get through some of these games if I actually want to play them because I'm not going to buy them. Yeah. Right before he does it, though, you should like for his birthday or something like buy a game and put on that game share just for him and be like, there you go. Thanks yeah, for all the it. other games. The only problem with that, though, is I'd have to buy, like, something weird and obscure, and it'd be, like, a joke gift, because... <laughs> Why a joke gift? Why not, like, an actual, actually nice gift? Everything. He owns everything. Uh, the new game on the console already, and it's not out yet. He has the new Spyro game on the console, and it's not out yet. He just owns every game when it's out. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are definitely over an hour here, so <laughs> if there's anything else you wanted to say, or um, did I see anything else I wanted to talk about? Also, you gotta like, I think you gotta pick up your sister soon. 
uh, at nine, and she texted me oh. in the middle of the show. Um, yeah, we would have ended it by now <laughs> if she had postponed. Yeah, the um, the uh, fuck Coco. I saw Coco. It's on Netflix, uh, and I haven't seen it yet, but yes, I yeah. watched it on my. That was a, such a good movie. I liked it. I, I think you know what? Like there is some cliche stuff in it. But it truly, to me, felt like, I mean, because, I mean, I like Inside Out, but I don't think there's anything that special about it. It's an idea that's been done before. Their presentation of the Day of the Dead, like, the way they make, like, the way, it, the, the logic the Day of the Dead works in their world, it just, oh, my God, it just felt like so much like an old Pixar movie to me. Like, it just, like, it had the same charm. It's, like, a really unique idea. It's, like, it's as unique as, like, the Monsters, Inc. with the doors that lead into the ch children's room and it's up in this warehouse. It's like it's one of those ideas. Like it's super unique and original. And I just I love mm. the presentation. I love the animation. And I will say, like, um, Tariq warned me, like, well, didn't warn me, but okay, and this, like what surprised me about Coco is it actually gets kind of fucked up and dark at one point. And there were several pop points where I felt like I know what he was talking about, but then there's something in there at the end, and it's like a breaking. It feels like something that you would see on fucking Breaking Bad. Like it, it, there is something pretty fucked up and twisted in the movie. Hmm. Um, Mars probably knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll try to see. There is cliches. Um, it's not. It's not perfect, but I. I felt very charmed by it. I think it's the most I enjoyed a Pixar movie since up. Hmm. Um, Inside Out's okay. Inside Out was... I, I did enjoy Inside Out. I just didn't feel like it was anything that new or unique. Hmm. And hmm. It, they just did a good... They did a good job presenting something that's been done before. Hey, on Pixar movies, since we're on like that, what are you looking forward to seeing Incredibles 2? Not really, because I'm not the biggest fan of the first one. But I don't I don't dislike the first one at all. I just... I, that one didn't hit me as much as it did the other pool, but I'm gonna see it and I might really like it. I um, I really I loved the Incredibles, I've... the first one when I was a kid. I still really love it when I'm when I'm an adult now, but like the, you know, the second one I maybe it's because it's like not what I was expecting. I was kinda hoping for like, you know, like a future stuff with the kids growing up kind of thing. Yeah. But I think I, I'll stay open minded too. like with anything. I don't know. I don't know. Bob Odenkirk Kirk is in it though, so that's cool. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to see it in theaters. I think the only way, I'd, honestly, God, I think the only way I'm going to see it in theaters is either if a large group of friends wants to go see it or if, like, one of my younger siblings wants to go see it because I'm not going to go buy a ticket to watch The Incredibles 2 alone. Um, I love going to see movies by myself, by the way. I do it all the time. But, like, Incredibles 2, I don't really feel like going to see that without Please people. film you. It's not because it's a kid's film. I went to see The Greatest Showman by myself, and that was really just, like, an awkward exchange because that <laughs> that that wasn't that left a bad taste in my mouth. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, Has that been another meme, too? Like, kind of closing Duck Hat Season 3. Like, haven't you talked about that a few times on Season 3, Greatest Showman? I talk about it. But, I mean, I think I dislike it more every time I mention it because okay. I said it was okay at first, and now I really just think that and then I was saying, well, the songs are good. And now it's the songs aren't even good. The songs are cliche and corny as hell, but they are performed well. That's where I stand on The, uh, the Greatest Showman now. Everything about it but the, but the singing voices are, is bad. The singing is done well. And by the way, the Remember Me song, remember that the fucking Oscars, how horrible the guy sang that song? Wasn't that the Coco act? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I didn't yeah. see the Oscars, so I don't know. It's a little, it's a little better in the movie. <laughs> I really felt like I really like. I really only thought it was a little better. <laughs> I think "Remember Me" is the worst song in Coco. <laughs> it's the most significant <laughs> song in Coco, but I think it's the least interesting. Yo. <laughs> I'm 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 wrapping up a report, and then I'll be right down. Cool, cool. All right, but that's that, um, Coco. That's my last note. Uh, two things. First of all, uh, relating to Duckass season three here, like, uh, or at least this episode. Where are we gonna? Where are you gonna do an intro for this episode that you were gonna give me or no? Skipping that. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Because if I want to get this out before E three. 
if I do something this weekend, then yes. If not, I'll send you a message saying just... I'd say put the episode together and then just save room at the beginning of it for a little intro. But start putting mm-hmm. it together and I'll let you know very soon whether it's going to happen or not. It's going to depend on my time this weekend, pretty much. All right, we'll see. Um, and just quickly, before we end the episode, since this is the end of season three, how should we end this season? Oh, boy. I hope... Um... Oh. <laughs> Barry Boner cliffhanger. He's actually still alive. He's still alive. I don't know. <laughs> season three didn't have anything to it. I, I just occasionally bitched about my <laughs> my health concerns. And uh, how about we thank, even though they won't acknowledge us, Discord because they saved us. Discord, yeah, Discord made for a good season three, and I think we started using Discord in the first episode of season yeah, three. That's when we started, man. Fuck. We didn't. We didn't use, did we use Skype for the season two finale? Yes, we used it up until well, season, so yeah, season three, we started Discord right then and there. Yeah, so yeah, we should, yeah, Discord, you know what? Season three is the Discord saga. <laughs> That's what we'll call it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Thanks, Marcus, for coming on, buddy. Slash darkest, slash darkest timeline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus, how was your experience on this episode? Good, bad, ugly? It was good. It's honestly, it was honestly a nice being able to just catch up and actually talk with y'all. Because it's been years. Too long. Yeah, dude, it's, it's been way too long. And, like, always feel free to hit me up on Discord if you want to chat again. I'm sorry it's been so long. Um, yeah, and, you know, you're, you're, you're always welcome. You're always welcome back on the show, obviously, Never. when we get guests on. We didn't get Cody on this season, I think. Uh, we didn't get Cody or Jeremy on this season. I think they're the only two we're really missing of our like regular guests. Like we didn't have Will on either, but Will was only on one. Cody wasn't on this season. Nope. Well, damn. Unless if he unless if he joined at the very end, he did join <laughs> at the very end of the break. <laughs> who's cooking? Unless if he joined at that the very like, end. Who's cooking? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Cody did make an appearance actually, and he gave one of the best oh, that moments. Was good. Who's <laughs> cooking? I missed that. Oh, one. I would I'm like to state that. that I would like to state every single bad thing that happened to me this season happened after the episode with Elijah with my hard drive breaking. So I still do blame every single bad thing that's happened to me since then on Elijah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> it is his fault. That stuff that I don't even want to talk about on the show happened. <laughs> And Fuck we'll end. Yeah. Sorry, and say that one more time. Oh, no, one more time. One more time. We gotta get that. Yeah. Fuck you, Elijah. Love you. <laughs>